Did you hear how I did that? It's obeying the Spirit where He has me, not the refusal to move off of where He had me. And listen, if we, if we think in every moment we've got it all figured out, then there would be no more room for God to ever reveal anything to us. Imagine how God feels about where you are. God, who knows all things, sees you jumping up and down about all this revelation you have, and you're 30 miles from the end game, 40 years from it all being over with, and you're, you're building castles back here on all this revelation you have, and the Lord goes, man, you don't have any idea how much more I want to show you, but you've got to keep moving forward. You can't keep living in the singular spot. Tent this thing up and let's move on. And so for Abraham, it's all about timing. Think about this. In the, in the, in the wilderness, Israel had no, no temple. She only had a tabernacle. And there were different moments as Israel journeyed through the wilderness where God did different miracles. And every now and then we get glimpses of how hard it is to move on past certain revelations. For instance, Israel's moving through the wilderness and they're thirsty. And so God tells Moses, take your rod and strike that rock and water will come gushing out of the rock and tell Israel to drink up. And he does. And it's a spectacular miracle. And water comes rushing out of the rock and Israel takes their cups and drinks to the fill. Some months later, they're still journeying, maybe some years later, they're still journeying through the wilderness and they whine again. This time they're thirsty again, they're dehydrating. And they come to Moses and they say, we need water. And God spoke, speaks to Moses and says, go speak to that rock and water will come out of it. And Moses is so mad at the people because they're always complaining. You get tired of being around people that complain. He's so mad that they're always complaining. He takes his rod and he smites the rock again. And nothing happens. The Bible says he smites it again in the Hebrew. And then that water comes flying out of the rock. And God calls Moses off to the side and says, that little show of anger that you had back there, that little show of disobedience is going to cost you your place in the promised land. Now, what was Moses' problem? Moses had built a structure around smiting rocks to get water. He built his own church around it. We are the church that smites rocks to get water. God did it once. God do it all the time because God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We love to quote scriptures out of context, by the way. I can imagine Moses might have pulled that too because why not? He's human like us. God did it once. He'll do it again. Bless God. Oh, he did it again. But it's not what God told him to do. God told him to speak to the rock. Now you might go, well, that's a subtle difference. Who cares? It's a different revelation for a different day. Once you've smitten the shepherd once at Calvary, you don't have to kill him again. All you got to do is speak it. He sent a bad message to Israel that you got to smack it twice. You want to, you want to beat your sin? Beat it once at the cross, beat it twice at the cross. God's, trying to, God's preaching a message way over Moses' head, but Moses has refused to step out of the revelation he was in yesterday into the revelation he's in today, and it costs him a piece of his future because doctrinally he built a temple around rock-smacking theology. And when you build a temple around rock-smacking theology, you don't have the patience for rock-speaking theology. Rock-speaking theology is too liberal and progressive. I'm conservative rock-smiter. This rock-speaking is not serious enough for me. See how easy that is? You go, well, that's a wild step to make. Tell that to Moses, who made it and missed the promised land. Something as simple as just merely in the moment not obeying the Spirit who said, we're not, we're not hitting rocks today. We're speaking to them. I don't know what church you think you've started out here in the wilderness. There are no structures out here in the wilderness, Moses. Not only do we not build a temple out here, you don't get to build ideas out here that you won't let go of because we're transient people. We're moving left to right. We are not locked in in a spot. We don't just die on that hill. We listen as the Holy Spirit grows us, progresses us, and you go, man, that's tough to do. That's why I use the word wrestling. Because we do have to wrestle with this sometimes. And it's bigger than us. And we have to go to the mat with it, with the Father, and say, I don't understand this. This isn't what I thought this was a year ago. And he goes, that's okay. We're not where we were a year ago. Amen. Right? This isn't what I used to would have said. And he goes, that's great. We're not where you used to be. How do you think I felt when you were there, son? 
I've always wanted to be up here, but I'm patient. So I've been running with you way back here. I mean, I've had some ideas and I've had a lot of scriptures behind them. And I've got up and said, thus saith the Lord. And God anointed it because we're holding hands on a journey. Now, God spiritually is out here at Revelation in a brand new city with the gates wide open and bringing everybody in. And I haven't been in that city, but I'm on that journey towards that city. I'm on that journey towards that move. So what happens sometimes is like Moses, we build, we build structures around doctrines. We build structures around movements. We build structures around ministries. When this happens, what happens sometimes is when you are ready then to receive revelation to go to the next spot, people that don't want to leave that spot won't go with you. And that's painful. So when you're on this journey and you go, the Lord's speaking to me, it's time to pull my tent up. I got to he's telling me something else. And you go, they'll say, you've left the truth. You've left the truth. The truth's over here. And you go, guys, we're on the road, man. We're not building churches around doctrines. We're just building this around Jesus. We're not building this around ideas. We're not building this around structures. This is what's happened in the grace message. I love the accent of grace in the church. I personally don't think you can overpreach grace. Um, to me, overpreaching grace is like overpreaching Jesus, <laughs> you know. But I do believe that we've made the grace message into the next thing. And I think what we've done with a lot of things is as the Holy Spirit moves among His church, like blows over His church, like Pentecostal wind, I think we gravitate to that wind and then we build structures around it. And we're a little bit like Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. We see Jesus and Moses and Elijah and we go, it's good for us to be here, let's build three houses. And let's keep you and Moses and Elijah right here. And God goes, get out of here, Moses and Elijah. Just listen to Jesus. We don't build houses around Jesus. Jesus got work to do. And so we're a little bit like that. So I used to make fun of Peter. Like, what a, what a stupid idea Peter has to build these three little houses. But the, the truth is, is it's an allegory for what we do with Revelation. Is that we, we try to build little houses around it. 